Welcome to the Johnny Ward Show. There he comes. He's a lovely little chap, isn't he? As Challenger 1 reaches the moon's surface, we can see Johnny Ward playing Keep Me Up. His ha <laughs> ha Marlene, you can't beat a nice cup of tea and a lovely, lovely jam donut. <laughs> The question is, will Frank Lampard win a game for Chelsea? I don't think so. You're always going on about your English football. Always going on about as if you're the best team in the world. Well, you're not the best team in the world. We are Scotland. I don't think so, you twerp. I'm a Pacino. Hoo-ha. Wilder, Ustoff, you're a dosser. With thousands in attendance and millions watching around the world. Here's Johnny! Uno, two, three, what? What's the matter, you? Hey! Got no respect! Hey! What do you think you do? Hey! Why you look so sad? Hey! It's a not so bad! Hey! It's a nicer place! I shut up in your face! That's a great! We're gonna do the best this time, I bet! Hey! What's the matter, you? Hey! Got no respect! Hey! What do you think you do? Hey! Why you look so sad? It's a nicer place. I shut up in your face. Okay, one time for Mama, everybody. What's the matter, you? Hey, got no respect. Hey, what do you think you do? Hey, why you look so sad? Hey, it's a not so bad. Hey, it's a nicer place. I shut up in your face. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Johnny Ward Show. We've got a great show for you today. And first of all, I'm going to kick off with one of England's greatest celebrities. Yes, it's David Dickinson from Dickinson's Deal. David, thank you very much for coming in to see us today. Thank you. It's, it's, it's lovely, Johnny. David, now, over the years, you've you've been on so many shows, and I know some fantastic stories. Um, you were telling me one recently. Uh, tell me the one about when you went to Parkhurst Prison. Well, we went to Parkhurst Prison, and uh, it's, uh, it's a top security prison on the Isle of Wight. And well, there must have been over over 600 people turned up with some lovely items. And uh, we put them all down and we had a break. We went out for lunch. And when we come back, they'd all gone missing. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a great one. That's a great one. Yeah, we'll have to remember that one. More, David. There must be other stories. Well, there's this particular one where a lady come all the way from uh, Cleethorpes and she had some bones that she'd found in the loft. And they thought they was of some um, prehistoric uh, bird or something. But after careful examination by some um, top, uh, you know, top people who work with us, um, they were found to be the bones of her mother, Nora, who uh, vanished some 30 years ago. Well, you win some and you lose some. That's the real deal. That's the Dickinson deal. Oh, David, fantastic stories. David, thank you very much. And um, hopefully you can pop in again to see us. Of course I will. Thank you very much, David. Line number two. It's who, who is that on the phone? It's, uh, it's me, Roger. Oh, hello, Roger. How are you? You rung up last week, didn't you? Yes, I, I did. It's Roger from Hackney. What seems to be the problem um, for you this week, uh, Roger? I hope you've had a good week. Well, um, I'm just ringing up. Just to let you know that um, I have written books, as you know, I'm an artist, and also I um, I'm an explorer. Yes, I do know that. Uh, you, you you wrote, or you were telling me last week, you was the one that um, wrote uh, "Don't Look Back in Anger." By uh, don't mention that again. I wrote the song. I got no money out of it, and I'm skint. Okay, Roger, calm down, please. What would you like to say today? Well, I've wrote a book. And the book is, um, it's about starting from nothing, building a business up and becoming a millionaire. And uh, have you been a millionaire, Roger? No, I haven't. That's why I'm writing the bloody book to try and be a millionaire. But no one has ever read the book or ever got back to me. I'm living in my flat in Hackney and I've had enough of it, to tell the truth. Roger, look, people like yourself, I can understand I believe that you're a songwriter, you're an artist, anything else that you have. I, I hear you're an inventor. Yes, I invented the Dyson, you know, Dyson, the um, 
which you clean the floors with. I invented that. I wrote it down on paper and it was stolen from me. I should have been a multi-millionaire by now, but I'm not. I'm not. And um, I'm afraid that, that that's the, the way it is. Could you help me? Well, I, I don't know how I can help you, but you're on national radio. You're on the Johnny Ward show. Roger, please give me a, a ring back next week. And, um, you know, um, we love talking to you, Roger. Don't we, people? We love talking to you. Thank you very much, Roger. Thank you. Well, let's go over to our uh, weatherman, Boomer, for today's weather. Thank you, Johnny. And uh, the weather today is going to be bloody, bloody freezing cold. So cold that your knuckles could freeze up. So please wrap them up with whatever you can. Uh, bed clothes, pillow clothes, uh, anything. Because the last thing that we want to happen to us when we get cold is for our knuckles not to work. And especially the men. We need all them little bits to work for us. So the weather is very important. So I say again, it is an emergency warning. Please wrap up your knackers and make sure they are warm. Now we go on to the weather today. There is going to be so much snow that we won't know what to do. Cars will be covered up with snow. The fridge freezer, we must not go out. But later on in the day, is going to be beautiful sunshine. And you know the thing that I can't understand in this country is that you go to other countries and the sun is out and it's lovely. You put your little shorts on, we go to the beach, we swim, hello, and we have a shower. Beautiful weather. But in this country, the sun comes out and you walk out in it and it's bloody freezing. Your cots will bloody blow up. It's so cold altogether. So be careful if you are in England. So all in all, I think it's going to be another crap day. But uh, good luck and have a lovely weekend. Thank you very much, Boomer. Thank you very much. Would you would you mind tying up my shoelace for me, please? <laughs> you really are a very, very, very strange person. With 50 metres to go, it looks like Johnny Wald has won the gold medal for Great Britain. He has, he has. Oh, God, who's getting me bloody kippers? Call down chips a 15 times, please. You, you do not make me laugh. <laughs> Will Roy Hodgson get the Chelsea job? Well, 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 Still on the moon. If so, can you hear us, Johnny? Yes, I can hear you. Let's get this damn show on the road. And now our regular guest on Boxing Weekly on the Johnny Ward Show is our old friend, <coughs> John Tyson. Hi, John. Hi, John. And um, how's it been going this week? It's, um, it's been tough this week. It's been very tough. What do you mean, John? Well, you know, I've had lots of people to deal with regarding Tyson, talking about the fights that he's not fought, and um, it's getting on my bloody nerves to tell the truth. Well, look, John, I mean, tell us, you know, how Tyson was brought up. My son, Tyson Fury, the GOAT, the greatest fighter in the world. He was born three pounds, and we were on holiday, and he was very, very small, three pounds. And we stayed in a caravan. And he was very small. And by the time he was 13 years old, he'd grown to seven foot six. And his head smashed through the caravan roof. Seven foot six. And so we had to get another caravan. Well, we had to leave the caravan site and go to a hotel. He was so tall. But he's kept on. And he's had a lot of adversity. He's had a lot of bullying because of his size. But he's made it as a world champion. And he's a credit to me and all the family. And I will fight any man here who goes against my son. I will take my top off here, Johnny, in the studio. I will fight you man to man. I will fight Deontay Wilder. I will take. I will fight Uskov and Joyce and Ping Pong who beat him or something, whatever his name is. John, please calm down. We love it. No, I'm not going to calm down. I've lost my temper. I'm a very violent man, Johnny. Would you like an ice cream? Yes, I'll have a magnum, please. 
Right. Now, John, thank you very much for coming on the show. We, we love your input. And please give Tyson our regards and hopefully we'll speak to you next week. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. John Fury, ladies and gentlemen. John Fury. What's the matter to you? Hey, God, no respect. What do you think you do? Why you look so sad? It's a not so bad. It's a nicer place. I ah, shut up your face. That's my mama can remember. Big accordion solo. Well, it's not long for the king's coronation and uh, Prince Charles will be named the King of England. Now, I'd love someone to ring up. I need some calls this afternoon. Um, we've, I've got one now. It's on line one. Who is it? Hello. Hello, it's David. It's David here. Um, oh, David, not David the activist. Yes, it's me. <laughs> you recognised me from last week, didn't you? I did, I did, yeah. And what what are you going to do? Have you got anything planned, Um, you know, in the coronation, what are you going to do? Because it's not very nice, really. You know, it's a big event. Well, you know, I mean, um, I, you know, I'm going to do something. I mean, it's cost them 50, 50 million pounds, and I ain't got money like that. <laughs> who has? I mean, who has got 50 million, you know? Um, but and what have you got up your sleeve? Any things you're going to do? Any stunts, you know, to, to spoil it for everyone? Um, yeah, what I have been doing, I'm going to fire myself from a rocket, a rocket at uh, high, high Park Corner, and um, I'm going to land in their carriage, um, directly in the carriage where it's pulling them with the horses, and I'll have all glue on me, and I'll stick to them, and, and they won't be able to get me out. <laughs> oh, that's that's um that's a terrible thing to do. Yeah, I know, but you know I've got to do something. Have I? Have you practiced on how do you know the accuracy from Hyde Park Corner in the rocket to land in the top of their carriage? Well, I've done some. Uh, um, we've, we've rehearsed this week. We've done two rehearsals. And how did you get on? Well, the first one, I landed in Norway. <laughs> and the second one? Uh, oh, the second one. The second one, I landed in Tesco's in um, Borrowable Night Street. <laughs> well, listen... David, you, you, like I say, you, you, um, David, you could get arrested and you could go to prison. Oh, I'm doing it for the country and I'm doing it for everyone, you know. And, uh, 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 you know, what happens if you're stuck to them? Well, I, you know, if I'm stuck to them, I'm stuck to them. Um, I'll have one arm around Camilla, the other arm around Charles. And if they can't get me off, you know, I'll have to go on the plane with them to the two week holiday in the Bahamas. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'll be in the shower with them. I'll be in the, um, uh, everywhere in bed with them <laughs> thank you very much um david and please look after yourself david and please you know try to enjoy yourself thank you very much our next guest ladies and gentlemen uh, oh hello malcolm how are you hello johnny yeah I'm, I'm fine i'm fine this is malcolm ladies and gentlemen malcolm's our cleaner he makes sure the place is nice and clean in the studio and he does our cups and sort of, oh, no, I'm, you know, I do what I, I do what I have to do, you know. Oh, Malcolm's been here for about, how long have you been here? 35 years. 35 years, that's a long time, you know. What did you do in your, in your, in your time, Malcolm? You know, what did, what did you like sport-wise? You know, we've never really spoken to you, have we? No, well, you know, you're busy and I'm busy, you know. Um, I like, to, I love tennis. I've, I've always, wow, really? I've, I've been to uh, Queens. I've been to Wimbledon. I've, I've met all the, uh, I've met all the hierarchy, whatever you call it. I've met the Queen and Prince Philip. I, do you know, I was having a, a, a um, um, I, I went to a, a, like a Wimbledon and um, a Prince Philip come in and uh, they was all drinking wine and everything. And he said, why are you drinking your wine? And I said, I like um, I like beer. He said, what do you like? I said, a Foster's. He only went and got me a pint of Foster's down the cellar, didn't he? What a lovely bloke he was. What a lovely bloke. And and you've been a fantastic story. And Wimbledon, you've seen all the great ones, all Boris Becker and John. I've seen them all. I've seen, I even went to the court trial of Boris Becker. No. Yeah, I went to the court trial. Yeah. Very sad. You know, all them millions and millions of pounds, you know, and he spent it all. And I spent my money watching him. And I'm a cleaner down here getting about three pound an hour. Very sad, isn't it, for him? I felt really sorry for him. Yeah, yeah, I can understand. It was really funny, yeah, Johnny, when the judge sentenced him in the court, because I was in the court and he winked at me. I think he thought, I think he, thought he was going to get off. He, he probably did. He probably, because, you know, he'd been doing it a long time, hasn't he? You know, getting away with it. 
yeah, yeah. And uh, but you know, I try and just think of the tennis side of it. But anyway, as he the, he was found guilty and he was waiting for his sentencing, and the judge um, looked at him. He, he said to him, "Can you stand up?" And and as he stood up, he, he turned he turned around, Boris, and he winked at me as if to say he's going to get off. And the judge said, "I sentence you to three years, four months." Well, I was shocked. I was shocked. And all of a sudden, Boris Becker said to the judge, he said, what's that in mumps, Your Honour? And the judge said, 40, love. 40. <laughs> I got you, got you there, didn't I? <laughs> Thank you, Malcolm. We'll see you soon. Thank you very much. That's Malcolm the Cleaner. Every week we're going to have a, we've got a Scottish poet called Danny Griffin. And um, we, we, Danny's coming on the show. Danny, um, pleasure to be on the show. Um, really thank you very much. And I know you don't really want to speak, but would you just like to say your poem? Please start whenever you want. On the hills of Killy Cranky stood our Willie, Archie and Frankie, wiping their nose on a filthy old hanky. On the hills of Killy Cranky. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. That's Danny Griffin, ladies and gentlemen, Scottish poet. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Please come back. Our special guest on Football Weekly this week is the one and only Jose Mourinho to discuss the Tottenham game this week and also the Arsenal game. So, uh, Jose, first of all, the Tottenham game. What was your, you know, what did you think of the, of the, the game itself? Before we start speaking to about uh, Tottenham Hotspur and Arsenal, me, I am special one. I am fantastic, I am handsome, I am beautiful. Tottenham Hotspur, 5 nil down in 24 minutes. You understand, 24 minutes. Respect me, 3 Champions League, 3 Champions League. Arsenal, kids against men. Me, I am handsome, I am fantastic, I am the special one. 3 Champions League, 3. Yes, I do not care about Manchester City. I do not care about Tottenham Hotspur. I do not care about Arsenal. Because you, people here, are in the presence of football god, me, handsome, beautiful, football god, have some respect. Yes, yes, yes. Especially. Line three, Nigel from Monaco. Good morning, Nigel. Good morning. What, what can I help you with? I'm, 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 I'm. I'm infuriated. I'm absolutely furiated. Furiated about what, Nigel? About Roger from Hackney who keeps ringing you up about he's invented this and invented that and the Oasis song. He's a bloody Welsh. It doesn't work. He's never worked in his bloody life. I remember him at university. He used to steal everyone's papers to get through. That's what he is. He's nothing but a bloody fraud. And as as for David David from Kent, the activist, what a poor waste of life he is. Never worked in his life, never done nothing. Both of them useless pieces of dog's stuff, whatever it is. I've had enough of it, and I want them to know, Roger from Hackney, keep off the bloody phone. And you, David, you activist, I'm coming for you. No, no, come on. Come on, no one's going for no one. I'm going to get them. Right, now stop it. Stop it. He's gone. He's gone. Nigel from Monaco, please calm down. I'm sorry about all the shouting, ladies and gentlemen, but, you know, this is what I like about the show. People really get worked up when other people ring in, you know, so it's their opinion. I've got one of Glasgow's greatest comedians, Billy Connolly. Billy, how are you? Uh, hi, uh, fantastic, Johnny. It's a, a great pleasure to be here. Thank you. Um, <coughs> thanks very much, Billy. Now, Billy, um, you know, being brought up in Glasgow, that's where you got your humour from and everything. And, you know, tell me some little stories and how it started and that. Well, the humour in Glasgow, it's a very strange humour, like everywhere in the world, probably. But, for instance, uh, I, I went to my, my, have my hair cut the other day and a guy was in front of me completely bald, completely bald. And the barber said, how would you like that, sir? How would you like it? Now, the man's not got one hair on his head. And, and that's the humour. It just And the guy said, he looked at him in the mirror and he could see that he meant it. How would you like it? And he said, just 
I've got two hairs, I think. You should just put one to the left, the other one to the right. Other than that, just just leave it messy. And and that's that's what it's like in, in Glasgow. Now, Billy, I know you're brought up in a, a, a govern. I govern a very hard area. And your family. What about your family? Well, my father's father and my grandfather worked down the drains. All worked down the drains. So basically, that's why the Connellys have been in the crap all their life. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the story. That is true. He worked down there. And my uncle, my uncle Billy, he was a coal miner and he loved music. He was fantastic. He loved singing. Let the wind blow high. Let the wind blow. He loves it. And he also, he died down the mine. He loved music. A piano actually fell on top of him. So he actually died A flat minor. But he was a lovely man. He really was a lovely man. Billy, thank you very much for popping in. You come and pop in anytime you want. Thanks very much, Johnny. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to the show, the Johnny Wall Radio Show. Please join me next week. I'll try and put um, a show on every Friday. If you go on Twitter, there will then be a link there to YouTube. The Johnny Wald Radio Show. Thank you very much and good night. And shut up your face. It's a not so bad. Hey. It's a nicer place. Hey. Shut up your face. That's a great. We're gonna do the better this time. I bet. Hey, what's the matter, you? Hey, hey. gotta no respect. Hey. What do you think you do? Hey, why you look so sad? Hey, it's a not so bad. Hey. It's a nicer place. Hey. Shut up your face.